another episode of the Sealess Villains Podcast. I'm your host, AJ, the comic collector, and I'm joined with my partners in crime, Red, Luke, and Eman. Tonight, we've got a special guest on the show. You may have seen his work on variant covers for The Killing of Red Sonia, Deja Thoris, Vampirella, Trial of the Soul, Flight, Yule's Vision, and Snow Monkey. Recently, he created a variant cover for Images, Stillwater, and TMNT's The Last Ronin, the latter of which sold out within two minutes. Now he's got a variant cover for DC's Rorschach, which you should all pick up. Welcome, everyone, to superstar artist Aaron Bartling. Hey, hey, Aaron. Welcome to the show, man. Aaron. Thanks for having me. Red, I saw you clapping, but we didn't hear it. I I saw you clapping, but we didn't hear it. (laughs) And there it is. There it is. Can I do the deaf way? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. Here. No, fun. man, it's it's our pleasure. Seriously, this is um, you know, it, it means a lot to us to have a superstar artist get on our show. Um, to be honest with you, you are first. So oh, um, awesome. Yeah, well, we hope. I'm even more excited then. Yeah. <laughs> How was your day today, sir? It was good. I just uh, was working, and that was pretty much it. Spent some yeah. time with the fam and. Uh, yeah, man. All right. Can, can, can you tell us what you were working on, or is that top secret right now? Uh, a little top secret. Yeah. Oh, a little <laughs> top secret. A, a, little a little hint, top, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. It's, uh, I'm working on a vampire cover right now. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. a hint. That's a hint for everyone yeah, out there. Vampire, vampire cover. cover. Hmm. <laughs> that is very cool. Or exclusive, everyone, or? Everyone wants me to work on vampires right now. I don't know why. <laughs> What we were going to do is we wanted to do a little bit of an icebreaker for you. Um, this actually was a question sent to one of our listeners, and they had asked us this question, but I thought it'd be fitting for you to answer this question uh, since you are obviously our first guest. Um, yeah. So for a bit of an icebreaker for our listeners to get to know you, um, we want to ask you, what are your three best villains and your three worst villains? All right. Um, well, which one should I start with? Should I start with the best or the worst? Let's go with the best. The best? Okay. So number one for me, uh, I, I would say uh, Thanos for sure. Okay. Um, number one. Um, and then I would say uh, Kingpin. And then um, what's my last one? Uh, and then uh, Joker. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. Good Why list. is it Joker number one? Hold on. There's going to be a lot of people asking this one right here. Why is it Joker just, number honestly, one? Honestly, I just love Thanos. I, I, there's just something about him, man. I just think he's like, especially after after seeing him on the big screen and just how well done he was. I just, um, I think that's what made me love the character even more. But um, yeah, I would say Joker probably runner up. But uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just love Thanos. I think he's, uh, I think he's pretty awesome. So. Awesome. That's cool. And what about your top three worst villains? So this one was kind of hard for me, man. I was like, I was trying to think like, okay, what, what would be the worst? Um, so I kind of went off of uh, like adaptations, like, like uh, films and how they interpreted them. Um, so I wrote, I wrote them down so I could remember. But um, so uh, if you guys remember Enchantress from Suicide Squad, I couldn't stand her. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's okay, good that one. is, yeah, that that is a good one. one. That, that, one that one hurt a lot. Yeah, that, that was god-awful. So um, Enchantress, uh, and then I will say, I think the character is cool, but just obviously it was horribly done. But uh, Mr. Freeze uh, with Arnold. Yes. Um, that was just, it was just bad. Uh, I, I feel like, I really think that if they got the right actor and they and he had it was the right script for it, like I think it could be really cool. But so yeah. you didn't like all his puns throughout the movie? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just <laughs> like you couldn't take him seriously, you know. And it's like he his story is actually really sad, and he has a lot of um, that character. I feel like has a lot of cool layers to him, you know. But it was just like because of the jokes and stuff, it just like fell really flat to me. But, See, uh, in in comics, Mister Freeze was solid. He's a great character. Yeah. Oh, but in that oh, movie, sure. it was just horrible. It was trash. Yeah, it was trash. Gotcha. Um, and then this one, uh, this one, I, I don't know what you guys will think, but um, Paul Giamatti uh, in Amazing Spider-Man Two as Rhino, I thought was pretty bad. He's got some good picks. 
He's got those some are really solid good picks. picks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought, I thought <laughs> yeah, Rhino was pretty pretty awful. It, it was either it was either that or I was going to do um, uh, I, I think his name's to- uh, Topher Grace, uh, the um, Spider Man Venom, the Venom, um, the Venom. That was, yeah, that was Eddie awful. Brock. Yeah, 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 that was so bad. Um, the guy that was in the black suit in that Spider Man yeah. Three movie. I don't yeah, even remember. That was bad. <laughs> So yeah, so that would be that would be my top three for the worst. And, and we'll 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 do Venom as a runner up. How about that? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. But, yeah. So. so you've been doing some varied carvers for a while now, but that TMNT last Ronin really got you that that notoriety. Yeah. Um, how yeah. has your career changed since that cover? Um. So essentially, I went from being like. A nobody, you know, quote unquote, to literally overnight everything changed for me. Like it was literally that dramatic. Like it, it was like, you know, I had a couple, I'd already done a couple published covers, but they just, they weren't, you know, it didn't, nothing had put me on the map of being like somewhat more of a known illustrator, you know, in the, in the industry. So, um, right. dude, literally after that got posted and, and it started, you know, um, kind of going viral, it was just like overnight, everything just changed for me. So, um, I think it, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of equate it to, I was thinking about it recently and like, it's almost like, um, it's almost like a, uh, you know, like a, a, a singer, like a musician or something, or even an actor, you know, it's like you get that one, you just need that one shot, you know, like that one role or that one song. And then it's like, these people's careers just explode overnight, you know, like, so I feel like that was kind of similar to what, you know, my situation where, um, you know, it was just like dramatically different. And so don't, you don't have to give names, Aaron, but was there, did you get messages from like PR people or marketing people from certain companies that were like, Hey, we saw this cover. Would you be interested in maybe doing a cover for us or what was um, that process like? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like, it's, it was just crazy because, um, you know, right after the cover got posted and, you know, things just started exploding, it was just people out of the woodwork started hitting me up from, um, you know, different publishers saying, hey, can you do this cover? Some, some of them were actual publishers. Some of them were like uh, indie uh, comics, you know, just looking for, you know, some type of commission. So, yeah, honestly, it... it like I said, like it just changed overnight where I, I don't really have um, any like PR people or anything like that hitting me up. But, um, but yeah, just a ton of people either wanting, you know, like I had a lot of people hitting me up for private commissions. Um, and then, yeah, and then obviously just cover work. So it was, you know, the majority of it. So uh, now that the popularity has exploded for Mr. Aaron Bartling, is it difficult for you to go down to a Safeway and, and get groceries without people mobbing you <laughs> and wanting an autograph? I mean, yeah. and, and I'm sure something like that has happened, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, almost every time I go out now, it's like I'm literally pushing people off of me because it's just, it's just so overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, are you that TMNT guy? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's me. When did you decide to become an artist um so uh it's actually kind of a funny story because uh my mom was over recently we were talking about it and um it's pretty like interesting because i I didn't even remember this but she reminded me that um growing up i mean i was always interested in art and i was you know i would say i was always artistic but uh you know i never really saw myself doing it as a career um and you know my mom would put me in little art classes here and there and, um, you know, I'd, I'd have fun and enjoy it, but, um, hmm. you know, I didn't, I didn't think anything like that serious about it. And then, um, in, when was it? It was 2000, 2011. Uh, yeah, 2011 was when I, I uh, started dabbling with, uh, digital stuff. Um, and so I just started practicing a lot and I started getting pretty decent at it. And then, uh, yeah. And then it was, so I would say in the last 10 years is when I really started taking it seriously. And then, you know, and then, uh, in the last year and a half to two years is where I'm like, okay, this is for sure, for sure what I want to do for, for the rest of my life, you know? So, um, but yeah, I think, I think because of, 
you know, over the past decade of, of working really hard and, and having a lot of failures and a lot of letdowns, there's, there's been a lot of times where I've just wanted to throw in the towel, to be honest, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, it, it was kind of like, I felt like I was in this valley for a long time and I was climbing this mountain and I wasn't sure when I was going to finally, you know, get to the top and, and see the horizon and, and what awaited me, you know, so um so there was a lot of times yeah, that over this past you know decade that i just wanted to quit um because you know it's like this industry is um, obviously you guys know like it's insanely competitive you know so it's like so hard you're going up against so many other incredible artists um people that already have a name people that already have notoriety and for you to try to you know come into this and, and like be like hey look at me you know like does anyone notice <laughs> me? you know like that's it's hard to do, you know? So, um, and, and I, and I didn't even, I didn't even over this past decade, I didn't even know if, uh, I know, I know there's the questions that we have later. We'll kind of segue into this, but I didn't even really know, um, if I wanted to do comics, I was doing other stuff with art before this. So, uh, oh, okay. So yeah. you didn't go to like any sort of traditional, like Andy Kubert school or anything like that? No, no, like so. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty much for the most part 100% self-taught. So oh, wow. uh, I'd say the most, um, the most. Uh, you know, I've took. I've taken like a few community course. You know, classes. You know, maybe like a figure drawing class or, um, you know, intro to design or something like that. But nothing. You know, nothing on like a like going to a four-year you know art school or something like that. And then I, I did have a uh, mentorship. I did for two years. Uh, so I was under a uh, professional for that time. That's when I learned like a ton, you know, because this guy he was actually working in the industry. Um, he's working on movies. Um, so I learned a ton from him. And then just, you know, going on YouTube, watching other artists, watching uh, tutorials, um, all that kind of stuff, just kind of and then just practice, you know, actually putting the, the pencil to the paper. You know, I feel like that's that's. Like you can, you can watch as many videos and, and, you know, all that stuff, but until you're actually doing the work and putting the work in, that's when, you know, you're going to actually build your skill, you know? So yeah, right, you right, have right. a healthy balance of both. Um, but, uh, you heard that, yeah, kiddo. So see, look, even Aaron had to climb the valley. He had to work hard. He went through all. He's got such a good story, and that can be applied to anybody out there, anybody listening, is that just work hard. Yeah. Look for your dream, and you're gonna get there. Aaron's there, man. He's a living, he's a living proof that this can happen. So it can happen to you guys too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and like I think that's what's been really exciting for me, you know, especially um, the way things are going. Is that I have so many times, you know, that people are would uh, message me or send me emails or whatever, and just say, "Hey, I just want to let you know that you know you inspired me to get back into the arts," you know, and like that's the coolest thing for me to hear, man, you know, cause it's right, like, right, right. if I can encourage other people and I can inspire other people, you know, it's like, I didn't set out to do that. You know, that wasn't my goal, but you know, because of what I've gone through, like it's inspired other people, other artists to um, pursue the arts, you know, in this world, we need artists, you know what I mean? Like artists are important, you know? And uh, so it, it encourages me when, you know, I can, you know, be a helping hand or people message me like, Hey, can I get feedback on this? Or, Hey, what do you think of this? Or, um, Hey, can you give me some guidance direction? Like I, I love doing that, you know? And it's like, I personally, I, I think that, um, there's been times in the past when I've reached out to professionals and, um, sometimes they don't even give me the time of day, you know? And it's like, I get it. They're busy or whatever, you know, but, um, and some are cool, you know, some will, will give me a little, a little guidance or a little wisdom, you know, but, um, but I want to be that artist that's like, that I'm like known for being that guy that's like, I'll go out of my way to help people out, you know, like, if right. they, they, you know, need that help, because I would want that for myself, you know, I wanted that, you know, when I was coming up, you know, and trying to figure things out, like, I wanted as much information and, and uh, guidance as I could get, you know, so um, if I can be that for someone else, then cool. You know, so. quick, quick question on that. Were there any artists that you reached out to and they gave you something like inspiration that you can maybe possibly share with any of our listeners who want to become artists? I'm trying to think. Uh, so other artists that, that I reached out to you're saying? Yeah. 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 Did they, 
did they tell you anything that kind of clicked in your head that that made you keep pursuing? You know, I feel like the the uh, uh, the resounding um, thing that w- was said is just is uh, it's it's kind of just simple, but honestly, just work hard. You know, like right. It right. literally, I feel like that is the overall kind of phrasing that that you know that people have told me. I can't think of any specific artists on the top of my head. I'd have to maybe like go through my messages, you know, on my Facebook or something. Um, right. But I feel like if, you know, if I can think back of what most artists would tell me is just don't, don't quit, don't give up and just work hard, you know? And, and like a lot of times that means, um, you know, that means sacrificing, you know, and, and uh, a lot of people don't want to sacrifice, you know, like if they would like, like if you had to pick, okay, it's Friday night. Right. And, right. and your boys are, you know, call you up and like, Hey bro, we're going to go drink and watch movie or whatever. You know, and it's like, you got to make that decision. Do I want to stay at home and paint, you know, and draw and, and better your craft or do you go out? You know, and it's like, mm-hmm. those are the kind of decisions that I feel like will ultimately dictate your future and your success. You know, is that like, right. I would rather sacrifice now and, you know, not hang out with people as much or whatever. And then like, you know, get to your goals and, and then, and then, you know, um, you know, enjoy the fruits of your labor, you know, then you can go out more and all that kind of stuff. I I mean, I'm not saying like all you need to do is work, you know, obviously you need to have a healthy balance of, um, you know, still having time away from the drawing board, you know, but if, but ultimately it comes down to, yeah, if you want to, if you want to reach your uh, goals, you're going to have to work, you know, so. I'm assuming you're working probably 10 to 12 hours a day at minimum. What do you do to center yourself after drawing for so long each day? Um, you know, just, uh, I, like, I, I'm kind of like a, a homebody. Like, and I know it's, I feel like it's, it's been even, uh, worse with, with, uh, COVID and stuff, you know, just everyone's staying at home, but, uh, honestly just spending time with my family, you know, like I like just, um, you know, watching shows, watching movies with my wife and just get some food and, you know, get some snacks and just kind of like relax. And I, I like a game too. So I like, I like playing uh, call of duty and like just stuff like that, you know, just to kind of like unwind and, and get my mind off of art stuff. So, um, totally. but yeah, actually, and a lot of people don't know this actually, but, uh, my, um, my day job, well, I guess art is my day job, but, uh, but I actually work at UPS as well. You know, what? I saw that on your Facebook profile <laughs> and I thought, I thought yeah. that must be an old job yeah, thing that yeah, you just and i just never took it down yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so so aj yeah. lives in southern california so now that he knows this i have a feeling he's going to be making some purchases online in hopes to maybe get an aaron bartling to deliver him some kind of goods <laughs> oh you know what aaron since you're here look 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 i have this copy of stillwater if you don't mind yeah. I've, got, I've got a stack of tmnt last rona if you want to sign them real quick yeah. so, oh wow since you're here if you don't right here I... <laughs> can you just sign right here <laughs> But yeah, so, um, yeah, so I've been there for, uh, six years now. Um, so that, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of my, um, benefits job. Um, so I'm there just to, uh, they have really, really good benefits. That's one of the reasons I haven't left the company. Um, and you know, that being that I have a family and I have two kids, um, you know, it's like obviously having health insurance is huge nowadays, you know? So, oh yeah, um, especially today. Yeah. Yeah, it's and and uh, UPS with UPS, I don't pay for any of my health insurance. So wow, nice! That's like a huge blessing. Um, so it's kind of like right now it is like when I say when I was talking about earlier, you know, going through the valleys and having the hard times. Um, I'm in Southern California, and, and you know, it's like you guys know, uh, California is expensive, you know, and it's like literally the past decade, I've I've worked like three jobs to survive, you know, and that includes art, you know, so it's been, it's, it's definitely been a journey, you know, that, that there were so many times I wanted to quit because it was like, I was trying to balance, you know, I've been married for five years and, you know, I had a couple kids, you know, so it's like, I'm trying to like, you know, spend time with my wife and my family, work two other jobs, try to get in art, try to do commissions and, and covers and then practice as well to try to get better, you know, so it's like all these things are happening. And trying to juggle it all and balance it all and uh 
and um, yeah, so it's it's. Uh, it definitely sounds like uh, you live in California because you're balancing yeah, yeah. <laughs> balancing multiple yeah. jobs, a family, yeah. a yeah. wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, man, yeah. that's totally yeah. understandable. So, I, I'm I'm on the grind. So, but but the goal is the ultimate goal is obviously to you know one day just do art full time. Yeah. Leave, almost... leave on good terms, of course. Leave on good terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah of exactly. course. That's where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, once you you start using them for your artwork deliveries you're gonna really depend on them yeah they're, they're like oh this guy just throw it in the trash <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're like hey guys just bring it in the back and burn it <laughs> no no wait, I mean, wait 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 he said ups on a couple of shows no go ahead let him do whatever he wants yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he promoted us he's all right yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost positive though i would say within i mean i'm i'm no fortune teller but with your rising stock it's only a matter of time before you're going to be just doing this full time. So thank you, man. I, yeah, yeah, man. I, I hope so, man. I hope so. So I just got to keep, keep doing what I'm doing and keep trying to work hard. And, you know, I think the doors will, you know, keep opening. So, yeah. Are there any current contemporaries that you um, get inspiration from? Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of just, different illustrate like not even really uh comic um illustrators but uh well there's a lot of comic illustrators but also um are you guys familiar with uh magic the gathering or wizards of the coast yes oh yeah watsy okay so uh there's a few uh illustrators that like i really really admire and look up to um i don't know if, are you guys familiar with any of the artists from them or uh Cynthia Shepard. No, not or, me. Uh, no, Tyler Jacobson. I've uh, heard of Magic the Gathering. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's like a card. Um, it's like a card game. But, but uh, for comics, um, I mean, there's a lot. Like uh, uh, Alex Ross, um, Art Germ, um, Derek Chu is legit. I'm a huge fan of his stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Ryan, I, I'm blanking on his last name. Ryan. Uh, Otley or Stegman? Ryan, wow, man, what's his last name? Otley is the Spider-Man guy, and Stegman is more of the Venom guy right now. Yeah, yeah what, oh, one of the – I can't remember his name. Uh, it's bugging me. Um, but, uh, do you guys know who uh, Marco Jerkovic is? Um, yes. Yeah, huge fan of his stuff. Um, I'm, like, blanking right now. But I, there, there's so many. Like, I can't even keep track. There's so – like, if you go on my Instagram, like, I don't, I don't even, like, follow, like – really any people it's mostly just all other artists so right 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 but so yeah oh oh, yeah so with all the variant covers that you're doing what's the thought process on how you create those variant covers um so for me uh one like one of my main goals uh with doing any whether it's a cover or just illustration um and i i kind of started learning this in the past couple years, but uh, one of the, one of the main things I focus on is uh, storytelling and narrative. Um, right. So th- those are super, super important to me. Um, I think that's what creates a, a powerful image and that's what, um, you know, draws a viewer in and that's what ultimately will, I think, um, you know, get more sales is because people like that stuff, you know, or people love that stuff. Um, so I feel like when, whenever I'm going into a cover, I'm, I'm, you know, like once I get the brief, I'm like, I try to get to know as much as I can, you know, and like, and it's pretty cool because a lot of the uh, publishers that I've been working with, um, I get early access to the comics. So it's cool because I'll, I'll get, be able to read through the whole comic and, you know, they're always like for your eyes only, you know, and like, I'm like, for sure. Yeah. Like this is fun. I'm all gonna so, read it. So, so, so you can't tell us who the last Ronin is? <laughs> okay so, that's funny. so that so actually with that one they're like super top secret idw like they have not released anything and i and i can't even tell you guys uh how many times i've gotten a message or someone asking me like okay just tell me who it is and i literally do not know like i have no idea they just they have like really kept that thing under wraps so that's the one book though that that uh they didn't give me any. So you guys saw like the uh, the ash can, you know that that was released. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah. So the ash can is essentially as much information as I know, like compared to everyone else. Oh, okay. So, 
the, those few those few panels you know and like that was it you know so so going into it with Ronan that it was tough because I didn't um I didn't know anything you know I didn't know what was going on with the story like I, I mean all I knew was that you know three of the brothers are dead we have one final brother which is the Ronan and just go for it you know wait what I, three of the brothers are dead wait what like, no, no, wait, I, I, so. <laughs> no. Wait, are you kidding? Me? So you're telling us it's Raphael? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you got me. Yeah, got me. All I know is Kevin Eastman would personally kill someone if anyone. Oh, <laughs> he would drive to their house. Oh, I can't imagine how pissed he'd be. But no, they've honestly done a good job of really like keeping that under wraps. So, um, but yeah, so. Uh, I lost my train of thought. What, what were we talking about? Um, oh, dead from, uh, narrative. Yeah, so narrative. So yeah, so that's just my main goal of going into into it is just like obviously the art needs to be good, you know. But um, but tell a story, you know, like what what's going on? Like what are these characters feeling? What are they um, what are they experiencing? You know, and like um, and then you know just um, doing you know making sure that the, uh, the lighting and the colors and all that kind of stuff are accenting what, you know, what's going on with the storytelling elements. Is there, so there's going to be a lot more interior work for you in the future then, correct? Um, interior? Uh, I mean, that'd be cool. Yeah. Like I, I've actually had a few people like hit me up and they're like, Hey, do you want to do interiors? And I mean, it, it would be cool. I, I think, uh, I would love to do interiors with like my style, like a more, like a, a really fully rendered out painted kind of a look, you know, for the whole book. It'd be a ton Ooh. of work, but I think it would look wow. really, really cool. Um, I would be all for that. So yeah, it'd be pretty sweet. So how about, how about storytelling or story writing? Uh, would, you, would you take any part of that as well? Um, good question. Yeah, that is a really good question. Um, as far as storytelling, uh, I, I feel like, I feel like my my ideas would just fall flat or just suck. I feel like they're just it, it's. I feel like it's so hard to be original and and come up with uh, new fresh ideas. So I feel like when it comes to writing, usually I just you know I try to stay out of it and just leave it to the you know the 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 people that that get paid the big bucks to do that stuff. You know, so <laughs> leave it to the writers, basically. Yeah, right? leave it to the writers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of which. If you got to work on an ongoing, what character would you choose Ooh. and the uh, writer you would want to collab with? Um, okay, so that's kind of an interesting question. Um, so Interesting as in breaking news that, <laughs> no? We'll, we'll tag whatever uh, writer you pick, you know. <laughs> so, no, okay, so what I was going to say is it's, it's, a little, uh, it's a little embarrassing for me, uh, especially – you know that this is a comic podcast but um so uh so that question i'm because i'm so new to this industry and and just new to comics i'm actually not really familiar with uh with different writers because i'm like so so growing up um i i would like you know i thought comics were cool but i never really read comics as a kid i don't know why i never really did um i wasn't a, a big reader um, so I never really got into it. And until this past, you know, like year basically that I've broken into the industry is now when, when I'm starting to read the comics and I, and like look at them. Um, so it would be hard for me to say a specific, because I'm still learning like who the best writers are out there, you know, like um, it, it would be hard for me to say, oh, this specific writer I'd want to work with. But I mean, I will say, um, you know, whoever's working on uh, Daredevil, if, if I could do Daredevil, uh, that would be something that I would love to do because he's one of my favorite characters. So. You, heard, you heard that here first, Marvel. Marvel, you, yeah. Marvel, Marvel. Marvel. And I know, uh, I, know Chip, I know Chip has done uh, Daredevil, so. Yeah, he's, he's doing the current, I, I believe he's still doing the current run, yeah. Yeah, so if, yeah, if, I, got, if I got to work with him on, on doing some Daredevil covers, that would be like a dream come true. So. You, he you heard it here first, guys. On yeah. the Seedless Marvel, Villains Marvel podcast, Marvel. Aaron Bartling would like to work with Marvel and do some Daredevil stuff. You heard it here first. Aaron on Daredevil. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's do it. You know, because we have dozens and dozens of fans who's going to petition for this right here, Aaron. We promise you we're going to get you out there, man. Oh, man. I don't think he's going to have to uh, petition too hard for Marvel to make a phone call. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that'd be awesome. So. And those comic books 
we're sold fast. Okay, he's not gonna have any trouble. <laughs> I mean, even these t-shirts right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look oh, what it look like. Red, red is sporting yeah. the shirt. Dude, that's awesome. What a nerd. God, I'm, so <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie. We I'm are. jealous. I'm jealous. I'm totally jealous. I want that shirt. <laughs> sold out, bud. Sorry. That is awesome. <laughs> So speaking, I know we've we've gone into the collaborations, but as far as your future goals, what 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 are your personal future goals as far as um, where you want to go? So future goals, uh, I would say for sure, uh, kind of just what we talked about. Uh, Marvel is you know the next the next big um, next big company that I, w- I want to work with. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to keep doing DC stuff. Um, and just, you know, just, uh, building my name and building my notoriety and, and, uh, you know, I just want to get to the point where, uh, well, I wish, honestly, like I wish we're back to normal and, you know, cons could happen again. Cause I think yes. that's what I'm most looking forward to is just like, I want to, yes, I want to yes. get out there and like meet people, you know, like that's, it's like, it's great getting to know people over the internet and, you know, building a fan base with that. But it's like, um, I think you, I think that's how a lot of artists really expand and, and grow their fan base is by actually getting the face to face interaction with people and shaking the hands and, you know, just uh, building relationships like that, you know, yeah. so I think that's kind of my next goals, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really worried about like, oh, I really want to work with uh, this publisher, um, you know, because I, I'm, you know, I know all that will come, you know, but uh, I, I really want to just keep, you um, getting my name out there and just trying to get, you know, like more well-known, I guess you could say, or bigger. Totally. Well, so. well you're in luck that the LA Comic Con is actually moving forward with their, with their, yeah. with their convention. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That's like really interesting. I'm, and that's I'm, right around the corner from where you live too. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm really curious like how, how that, how that will work out. So Frank uh, Miller's supposed to attend. So that's, Everyone oh, wears wow. a mask and no one's handshaking with Aaron, but you can get you can get an autograph. That's probably what's yeah. going to happen. There it is. Elbow, the elbow yeah, elbow, elbow bump. <laughs> Would you consider uh, being an artist attending LA Comic Con, or is it still? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I think I'd be open to it. Um, you know, like I think uh, I'm, I mean, I'm sure, like I'm, I'm sure if they actually go through with doing it, um, you know, they'll have like the. I mean, I know if there's a lot of people there, it will, will be hard, but I'm sure they're, you know, thinking about like preparations on like, you know, how to be safe with everyone and stuff. But uh, me personally, I, I think I would, I think I'd be open to it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm just like over enthusiastic for getting back to normal with life and stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. We're now, all pretty I know much we... over this right now. Everyone's over this whole COVID thing. We just want to get out there. We want to get to I'm our over cons. it for sure, man. I'm just like, gosh, can we just freaking go back? We need it? our cons. We need our autographs, and we need Red and AJ yeah. to be happy with their exclusives. Yeah. That's what that. There you go. That's what needs to happen. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. Now, I know that we spoke a little bit off air, and you touched on this briefly. So you've never actually – you've never attended any of the cons, so you don't – you don't know that how crazy it can be then, right? No, I mean the 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 only thing I can really say of like is is uh, living vicariously through my brother in law, who he went a couple years uh, for this past couple years, and uh, you know when he would come back, he would just tell me like how he would take videos and pictures and kind of show me. Um, he went to uh, San Diego, and uh, yeah, it just looks like insane, you know. And I'm just like, man, this looks. Like it looks crazy, but it looks like a blast too, you know. Like so, I'm, I'm excited to hopefully one yeah. day do that. So, Red, Red, and I have been frequently frequenting San Diego Comic Con for, I believe, the last at least four years. Oh wow! And it, it's it's intense. It's yeah. very intense. Oh, it looks yeah, it looks wild. Yeah. So. I think artists get in for free. If you once you have once you're uh, kind of recognized by the big three. That you you already get yeah. the badge. I, oh, I do. Yeah, I do know people who um, they're not in Artist Alley, but they've worked enough in the industry where they've requested for the professional badge, and uh-huh. they've gotten that. And it, oh, wow. from my understanding, it is a free pass. So uh, for next year, you could definitely. I don't oh. know. I don't know the submission for that, but you should look into that and you know. Aaron doesn't need to submit anything. He needs to just say, hey, look, TMNT, last Ronin. 
me. <laughs> oh, boom. Come in. You, we get you a booth. We got you, Aaron. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's actually kind of funny that you guys are saying that because uh, I tried to get uh, on Artist Alley. I think it was three, maybe two years ago, two or three years ago now. And uh, I got denied. I got put on the, the uh, waiting list or something. Yeah. For which that con? Be, that would be a huge uh, change, you know, and, uh, you know, in response from them that, you know, if they were like, yeah, oh, yeah, sure, come, we got you, you know, that'd be cool. That Wait, was happen. it for San Diego? Yeah, it's for San Diego, yeah. When I, when, I, uh, when I applied, like, I was telling all these people, like, oh, yeah, I applied for, you know, to get into Artist Alley. And, and, like, I'd have friends hit me up, and they'd be like, oh, so what's the update? You know, did you get in? And, you know, like, I pretty much knew the outcome that I, I wasn't in, you know, but I would tell them, like, oh, yeah, they're, uh, you know, they put me on the wait list. So, you know, they're, they're just waiting to accept me, you know, and it's like, obviously, I knew it was probably going to be a negative, you know, but it was embarrassing to tell people, yeah, I didn't get in. So. After this podcast, there will be no more waiting for Aaron Bartley. <laughs> He's going to get into whatever yeah. con he wants. Watch. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Have any of the um, online stores have, have more of the? I should say, have more of the online stores hit you up to do exclusives for them? Um, like, like, are you talking uh, just like retailers, basically? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like it, it's been uh, so. Oh, actually, uh, kind of to uh, backtrack a little bit um, on the question about um, what are my goals. So one of the other ones is to, you know, most of the covers that I've done are all like retailer exclusives. Um, so then one of my big next goals is to do a, uh, like a direct market, um, which right. would be huge, you know? So if I can get a direct market cover, you know, from like DC or Marvel, like I feel like, okay, now like not, not that doing it for, you know, a retailer isn't as cool cause it's still just as amazing, but, um, but I feel like that would be a little next level, you know, to be able to have them directly contact you for a cover, you know, like that's when you really, you really hit the, the gold mine when you get that direct market stuff. So, so like sure. a direct market exclusive of daredevil perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to petition oh, for you, man. Watch it's going to happen. Oh. <laughs> Dream big. Yeah. When um, you do these variant covers with the retailers, do they kind of give you a, like, a? do you collab with them as far as they ask you, this is how we want the cover to look, or do they just completely leave it up to you? Um, great question. So uh, typically there, there are some specific publishers that uh, they conduct their business in, you know, in, in uh, different ways. Uh, so for example, um, they don't, they like boom, uh, boom studios. They really want to work directly with the artist, and they don't want the artist uh, speaking with uh, the retailer at all, like from basically beginning to end. So if, wow. you know, if, if, uh, if I'm talking with boom and I'm, I'm working with the editor and they're like, okay, here's, you know, here's the book, uh, feel free to read through it. If you get any inspiration, any concepts, shoot it over. So I'll think of some concepts, some ideas, um, and then, you know, I'll whip up a, a thumbnail sketch. I'll shoot it over to them. The editor will either accept it or deny it. Uh, so far, I've been lucky, and they always are pretty happy with what I send them. So, um, you know, so I'll shoot that over. And then what they'll do is the editor will reach out to the retailer, say, hey, um, here's, what, here's an update on the, you know, concept, the, the idea and the sketch. Do you like this? And then the retailer will say, hey, yeah, I really like that. Give them the green light they'll get back to me and then, you know, I'll move forward. Um, with some publishers like uh, Dynamite or whatever, like I'm working directly with the uh, retailer and they don't care, you know, Dynamite could care less. So, which is nice because it cuts out that middleman because if I'm, right. if it's doing, you know, like with Boom, um, you know, Boom's been awesome. I, I love working with them, but just the, I would prefer to work directly with the retailer because it's easier for me to say I make some changes on the cover, you know, like artistic changes. And, and I want to see if the retailer likes it. It's so much easier for me to shoot them a quick email or a Facebook message and say, Hey brother, what do you think of this? And they say, Oh, I love that. Or uh, I kind of like the other one more, as opposed to if I'm working with boom, it's like, I got to send it over, maybe wait a few days just to hear back, you know, and like, as opposed to just going straight 
straight, you know, straight shot right to the retailer. And then, uh, yeah. So, um, so it's, you know, it's all different. Like it just, it just depends on how they want to conduct things. Um, DC, they're, they're the same way. They're, um, like super, super, uh, professional. Like, like it's crazy. Cause not, not that the other publishers are, are not professional, but, um, it was definitely interesting working at DC cause they're like, I had to sign a bunch of, you know, contracts and stuff like with N- Warner, Warner like Brothers. NDA? Yeah, like that kind of stuff. And, and like, um, I had to like fill out some stuff for Warner Brothers. And the editor that I was working with, um, his name's Eddie. He's really cool. Um, and he was like, yeah, he, he's like, just for example, we've had situations where they'll actually have an artist uh, that will work on the cover directly with the retailer and they will get to the final stages, almost to a complete cover, he said, and not really getting any feedback or approval from DC. And they'll shoot it over upon deadline date. And uh, the editors will say, uh, yeah, we didn't approve this, it's denied. And they'll like pretty much lose out on the whole cover. So, oh, so man. like, he's like, you don't wanna do that. You know, it's like, you wanna, work with us so that you can get approval. So it was like every single thing that I was sending them, they they ca- they have like a chain of command basically. So it like goes to him and then it goes to like sales and then like some other people and they like, so they all have to approve it as opposed to with like some of the smaller publishers. It just goes to them, you know, that one editor that I'm working with. And if he likes it, cool, you're good. You know, and typically it's, typically I'm working with the senior editor. So he has like the final say on everything. Yeah, um, right, right. But, uh, so, yeah, Aaron, so, uh, l- let me ask you this then. What was your process when it came down to the cover for The Last Ronin? Good question, Ime. Good question. Um, my process. Um, so that was, it was uh, going back to, you know, what I talked touched on earlier with, like, the storytelling. Um, that was one thing, like, going into I was like, okay, well, I don't have a ton to go off of, but, um, you know, I know that this is going to be a sad story. I know this is going to be emotional. So, uh, you know, with working with Denton, we knew right off the bat, okay, like we, that needs to be the, the focal point. That needs to be the focus, you know? And then, um, and then I kind of, you know, to be honest, man, like I, I forgot exactly how we came up with the, uh, the, like the ghost idea. I think initially we wanted to do the, all of them, you know, we wanted to do all the brothers, but uh, I didn't come until a little later to do the ghosts. And actually, the the uh, first concepts for for the cover were to have the three brothers as ghosts, uh, but they were going to be in the sewers. And so I thought, like, well, that'd be kind of cool, you know, because you know, obviously, that's you know where they usually are is like the sewers, you know, unless they're like out fighting or whatever. Um, so I thought it'd be cool to maybe have like this shot of like a um, a sewer shot where they're same same idea. They're standing there. The run is in the front. He's crouched down. You know, one of the brothers has his hand on him. And then maybe it would be like a, a crack in the ceiling of the of the uh, of the sewer, and have like moonlight shooting down in, and have it all moody and dramatic and stuff. Um, but then uh, um, Dave, who is uh, Denton's uh, boss, he uh, had the idea of maybe doing a, uh, a cityscape, and um, so I was like, yeah, I was like, let's try the cityscape. So I, I just did like a quick little, <clears throat> excuse me quick little sketch of the, of the uh, cityscape background. And um, Dave and, and Denton were fans of uh, uh, Blade Runner. And so that was kind of my, so I went on Google and I started like looking at pictures of, of Blade Runner. And I was like, okay, what's the city look like? You know, it's very futuristic. And the book, uh, the Ronin book is set in 2077 in New York. So I was like, oh, this would be perfect because we have the futuristic city background. We can have the flying cars and all that stuff. So I whipped up something real quick and I sent it over to Denton and uh, he loved it. He was like, oh, that's perfect. He's like, Dave loves it too. So keep moving forward with that, man. So I was like, okay, cool. And then, uh, you know, I shot all my reference. So all, all, most of my covers, I always shoot uh, reference. So my wife is actually, uh, she's a photographer. So, um, so we'll just like, I'll set up my lighting how I want it and stuff. And then, uh, I, I, I played the turtles for the cover. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, like you, you can look nice. through my like library of reference pictures and there's like <laughs> one of, you know, there's one of me crouched down with like a hood on, like as the Ronin. 
Um, so oh, that, okay. Hold on. Wait a minute. So, so your wife took pictures of you in certain poses, and then that's what you used as that's yeah. what I used as a reference inspiration yeah. for the, that is so yeah. awesome that is so yeah. smart too knowing yeah, that she's like really an artist great. as well yeah so I'm like that is really great and most artists like if you, if you talk to any of them like all all the professionals like most of them use reference you know unless you're some type of like crazy prodigy that um you know you just look at something and you can remember how it looks most yeah. people can't do that you know so most even the even the, the classical artists they all use reference you know so um, if you want to, you know, if you want to replicate a two dimensional image, you know, to, to look as realistic as possible using reference is like key, I feel like. So um, that's what helps me produce, you know, the, the images that I can. So, um, so yeah, so I, so I shot reference and, um, you know, I felt uh, all of them looked pretty powerful and they all had a good storytelling feel to them. And uh, yeah, and then I just went for it, man. And then um, it, it uh, and it was nice too, because um, IDW gave us uh, a lot of time to work on it. I think I had a month to work on it, which was nice because most of the covers that I work on, I usually only have like a week, wow, maybe a week and a half to work on. Like, so, like sometimes, uh, sometimes, like I even had, um, uh, you guys know Steven with the comic mint, um, like he'll hit me up sometimes and he'll be like, Hey, uh, I have this cover for you, uh, that's due on Monday. And it'll be Thursday, and it's oh, like wow. I have to decide: okay, do, I, wow. do I try to bust this out or not? And, and, and <laughs> sometimes I have to tell them no. You know, like I'll be like, "Hey, hey, man, um, I don't think it's realistic for me to do it, so I'm gonna have to pass on this one." And he's like, "Okay, yeah, no worries, totally understand." Uh, it was a last-minute cover; wanted to see if you could squeeze it in, but um, you know, so, sometimes it's like it, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to like I, I probably could have done it but it, it wouldn't be my, my best work, you know? And like, I want to put out stuff that I'm proud of, you know, and that I'm happy with, um, especially if people are buying it, you know? And it's like, you know, I want to feel confident in what, you know, what the retailer is putting out and what I'm putting out. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes it's best to, it's, it's a wise decision to just pass on stuff, you know? So. Are you a bit of a perfectionist when it comes out of your work? Are you really uh, critical of the stuff that you draw? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, like I, sometimes, like I'll I struggle with uh, overworking a piece, and and sometimes I can actually make it worse. Like it was better when I didn't overwork it. So that's something that that's it's uh, it's tough to find that fine line of um, knowing when to stop a painting. You know, because it's like you don't want to go too far, and it's like that happy medium. Like you need to render it enough to where it looks really solid, and really good, but not too much where it's like you're just getting in there and just nitpicking every little tiny detail, you know, and like for a painting, you don't need to have every little tiny detail fleshed out. You know, it's like you get the focal points mm -hmm. need to have the most detail and everything else can have soft, softer, blurrier edges. And, you know, when you look at an image, you know, that's painted that way, um, the human eye doesn't need to have every single thing perfectly, perfectionately, you know, uh, painted and rendered, you know, so. Now you mainly work in digital right now, correct? Yeah, so pretty much everything that I'm doing is digital right now. Uh, I will do some stuff uh, in charcoal. I'll just like sketch it up um, in charcoal and then I'll scan it in and then I'll like paint over it. Um, and that's usually just for like, if I, you know, obviously most of the stuff I'm doing is character work. So uh, just to get like the uh, gesture down, like I'll, I'll, I'll draw it traditionally um, and then I'll just scan it in and I'll paint like under the lines. Uh, but something actually that I really want to get into is uh, gouache. Um, I really want to start painting in gouache. Um, so I'm going to try to get some cheap paper and get some uh, gouache paints and then uh, just start practicing because I love to do, um, that's what Alex Ross uh, works in is gouache. And, you know, obviously legend, you know, but, um, but yeah, so I want to start doing that and then maybe, you know, see if I can start doing some commissions with that and, uh, start selling some traditional work. So do you prefer to do digital? Uh, yeah, I would say it's, I don't, it's tough because I love traditional in a sense that you feel very connected with the art, if that makes sense. Um, like I love that uh that like when you're painting you know like getting the paint on your hands you know and like 
hearing the, the, the brush marks and, you know, like, or when you're working with charcoal, you know, hearing the, the charcoal, you know, pressing against the paper. It's just like a, it's kind of a therapeutic thing, you know, like it's, right. just, it's, a, it's like a weird, uh, it's hard to describe, but like a weird, just satisfying kind of feeling, you know, it's it like, just puts you in your zone. Huh? Just puts you in your zone. Yeah, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so I like that. I like doing that and this, with uh, traditional, but um, I prefer digital just because uh, one, I'm more comfortable with it. Uh, two, I've been working, you know, I've been working way longer with it and, uh, and it's just faster, you know, because it's like I can bust out a cover in, you know, a few days. Whereas if I did it traditionally, it might take me like, you know, over a week to finish, you know, so. Gotcha. For sure. But. Well, I know that you've got, uh, you know, you've got a busy schedule and we're almost time to wrap it up here. But E-Man had some lightning questions that he wanted to ask you. Cool. Before we let you go, we got some yeah. rapid fire questions for you, Aaron. All right. So he's one of the, these are questions that we're going to ask. Right, you don't right. get to think about them. It's just one of those things where the first thing that comes out of your mouth. So even if it's like lettuce, just throw it out there. Okay. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> All right. Go. Soda or juice? Soda. Cookies or brownies? Cookies. 80s or 90s? 90s. Outdoors or indoors? Indoors. Favorite food at 1 a.m. on a Friday night? Mexican food. Uh, what car are you going to buy the moment you win the lotto? Uh, Ferrari. Who's going to win the NBA Finals? Lakers or Heat? Lakers. <laughs> and who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was going through them pretty quick. That's good. That's Sounds good. He's like, no idea at the end. No idea at the end. All right. Awesome, Aaron. Yeah. Aaron, are you a uh, more? You don't follow that much into sports anymore, correct? Yeah. Uh, I, like, you know, I think the thing with sports is, you know, some people might not agree with me. Like, I like, I think, uh, not like, not to get all deep about it, but I think that, like my reasoning behind like not being a huge sports fan is I was a huge sports fan growing up uh, like as a kid and stuff. Um, and then, um, I, uh, I was actually in the military. Um, some people don't know, but uh, I was actually in the army and, uh, I think, um, I don't know, it might be like a subconscious thing or something, but I think it always bothered me for some reason that, um, that people like service members are sometimes not, they're not uh, like looked up to or respected as much as like I wish they were compared to athletes. Um, like mm -hmm. I feel like athletes are really idolized and they're really like, um, they're just kind of like put on a pedestal and they're paid millions of dollars, you know? And like, um, and so I think just uh, being in the military and like, um, and like having friends that got hurt and stuff like that, like it was uh, for me, it was like, um, I guess they, I just, they weren't they weren't like respected or looked up to the way I felt like athletes were and they weren't getting paid like what they should be getting paid when like they're putting their lives on the line, you know, right. like to yeah. keep our country safe, you know, and like to protect us. And um, so I, I, I don't know, like I think like a lot of it, I know that might be like stupid to some people, but for me personally, like that's kind of why like athletes, I feel like just kind of like have bugged me. And then maybe that's why it's like turned me off of sports is that like, they a lot of them are just like super entitled and they think like they can say or do whatever and like um yeah so anyway so i know that's kind of a, a random side topic but uh that's just me personally like how i feel towards it um you know towards sports i mean i, I think like it's entertaining to watch sports from time to time but yeah i think that's just why i'm not like the the biggest fan anymore of like right right right, of, right. Uh, sports so one last quick question, sir. The tattoos on your arm, did you design them yourself or did was it an uh, actual tattoo artist? By the way, by the way, that was a question Red wanted to ask, but he didn't, and I think he should have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put him on the line for that one right there. Thanks, Kirk. <laughs> so all of my tattoos are, uh, they, they're like, like I thought of them and I, I somewhat designed them like in, in a concept, but, uh, but my tattoo artist is the one that, 
uh, ultimately executed them with like the final drawing and final idea. So gotcha. There yeah. you go, Red. Did you see he answered your question for you? Yeah, we got yeah, your yeah, answer. Thank you. okay. <laughs> As an artist, you figure like they would draw their own t- tattoos, but yeah, yeah, have, have well, their own input on there. And speaking of tattoos, like a lot of people hit me up actually to design tattoos, and I don't do them anymore. I hate doing tattoos um, just because. They, okay, so think about this, guys. So obviously, I don't, you know, I don't know if you guys have tattoos. Do any of you guys have tattoos? Well, I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think all of us actually have at least. Oh, except for Red. Red does not have one, but everyone well, else. So you guys one. know how expensive they can be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like yes. they can, they can, they can add up. You know. So, um, so a lot of people will hit me up and like, oh, can you design my sleeve? And so you know, I'll tell people, uh, sure, but it's going to be six or seven hundred dollars. You know, like oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> full yeah. crazy illustration. I'm like, I'll do it, but it's gonna be six or seven hundred dollars. And they're like, some people are like, oh, okay, sure. And then some people are like, oh, geez, that's way out of my price range. Thanks, anyways. You know, and like, so it was happening so often that people were hitting me up because you have to think <laughs> about this. So I'm designing it. So yeah. let's say they spend six or seven hundred dollars. Then it costs them another eight hundred dollars mm-hmm. to get the tattoo. So then they're going to end up spending fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars on a tattoo that would have only cost them eight hundred dollars if someone would have had designed it for, you know, twenty bucks or fifty bucks. You know, right, but right, like, right. But see, know, that's that's not your problem. That's their mistake yeah, for not exactly, understanding exactly, this. Exactly. That's not a mistake though to get an Aaron Bartling design exactly. tattoo. That's see, worth they don't know. See, they don't know what they're missing. Yeah, don't listen to them. Bar- yeah. I think I think Red should get that. Uh, TMNT Ronin chest chest piece on right, his, on right his on the chest, <laughs> yeah. right yeah. here. Yeah. If, yeah. if someone did that, I would legit fly out and take a picture of that person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't care if you're in New York, if you're in Canada. I'm like, I'm flying. I'm, out. I'm doing this. You, you heard that here, folks? A week On the C List <laughs> Villains podcast, Aaron will fly out if you get a tattoo yes. of of the last yes. Ronin on your chest somehow. So you yes. heard it here yes. first. Chest piece or back piece? Do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I did ask Kevin Eastman for his autograph on my arm to get tattooed later. Oh, nice! Oh, you man. did? Yeah, he, he never, he didn't want to touch the skin that day, so he figured he'd just write it down on a piece of paper and then had the guy oh. trace it. Would have been nice though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would have been cool. Uh, <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, last question. Um, basically, um, if you want to plug anything that you want to plug, and um, are you taking for our listeners if they're curious? Upon getting a commission from you, is your commission list open? Anything of that nature? Um, yeah. So right now, uh, I am taking private commissions, but uh, there's like a little bit of a wait list just because, like, I'm still working on published work, and and uh, that's that's obviously my priority. Gotcha. Um, but if For you know sure. whoever's watching, if you guys usually the best way to reach out to me is just my Facebook. You know, I feel like that's how. Um, you know, I, I communicate mostly with people, so you can reach out to, you know, just look up Aaron Bartling. Um, you know, I have a, a, uh, art page on Facebook, Aaron Bartling, and then my personal. Um, so feel free to, you know, reach out to me on my personal. Uh, that's usually the preferred one of communication. And then, uh, and then also my, uh, Instagram is, uh, Instagram.com slash Aaron Bartling art. Um, and then, uh, I do have a Twitter as well. Not super active on the Twitter, but, uh, it's just Aaron Bartling as well. And then, um, I am, I do have a YouTube set up and, uh, I want to start streaming at some point. I keep on saying that and I've been saying it for months that I want to start streaming. Uh, but it's just, it's hard because, you know, throughout the day, obviously I'm, you know, we're usually working on covers or whatever. So it's like, it's hard to squeeze in trying to stream and then get, you know, enough work done throughout the day. Right. Uh, right, right. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, as far as like my uh, social media handles, biggest ones I'm active on is uh, uh, IG and then the Facebook. So. Uh, awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again, sir, for being on our show. And uh, we are hoping for all the, the greatest um, success for you as far as. Thank you, man. Um, art and i know that uh within the next few years we'll probably have to ask like your agent if we can like, <laughs> get, get on get you on our show or something like that he's oh. a friend of the show he's a friend of the show he's already he's yeah. been on he's we know yeah. i'm with i'm with the dj i'm with the dj you know <laughs> yeah <I'm> with, uh, <laughs> no well yeah thank you guys so much for having me on and 
you know, all, all the questions were, were awesome. And, uh, yeah. So I, I just appreciate you guys, um, you know, wanting me to come on and talk. So. All right. right on. Hey, thanks a lot, Aaron. Thanks for being Thank a part you, of the show, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Aaron. Of course. Of course. Thanks again for listening to another episode of the Sealess Villains Podcast, your cultivators of the comic culture. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Spotify. All you got to do is search for Sealess Villains. If you want to send us an email, you can contact us at sealessvillains at gmail.com. Make sure you follow Luke Weeks on Facebook and Instagram and join his Facebook group, Rare Keys and First Appearance Comics, also known as RKFA Comics. I'm your host, AJ, and you can find me on Instagram, AJ the Comic Collector. Thank you, and see you next episode.